Greetings, my fellow nerds. Welcome back to D's Nerds. I'm Chris, and today we're going to be going through my favorite zombie films. So as with a lot of other recommendation videos we've done for Halloween movies, I thought I'd go through and pick out my favorite zombie films and just go over why I love them. So I've got six films here that I just really love to watch during this time of year, and so I hope that you, uh, you like them too. So I figured we'd start where zombie movies really started. And let's just go ahead and kick right in with Night of the Living Dead. I mean, come on. This is where it started. George Romero threw, in a, threw it all together and started a lot of the tropes that you see going throughout, throughout the rest of time, basically. Uh, this is still a great film, and it's in a spectacular shape thanks to this Criterion Edition. I fully recommend getting this version. It, I mean, the film looks flawless. It looks better than it ever has. I remember when I first saw it, you know, I was probably in my teens, and it looked rough. I mean, it looked bad. It looked, you know, amateurish. But this looks fantastic. Um, just some great things. I mean, some very revolutionary things. I mean, having a black man in the lead film and, you know, basically ordering people, telling them what to do, you know, taking charge. This film is just fantastic. I mean, the ending is just spectacular. You know, there's some things that are kind of wonky about it. You know, I think the first zombie, he actually runs. And, uh, you know, zombies typically during, you know, for, especially in the Romero films, don't run. But um, it's just fantastic. I love this film to death. And then, of course, let's start with the sequel to it, Dawn of the Dead. Now, the interesting thing about this is uh, there's a 4K version coming out overseas that I hear is going to be really amazing. It's a great box set and everything. But as far as in the States, this is out of print and this can go for quite a bit of money. So I'm very fortunate that I bought this for like 10 bucks and, you know, just because I love the film, uh, not even realizing it was going to go out of print. But I go back to this one very regularly. Uh, again, a great film. Whereas, you know, it definitely feels like Night of the Living Dead is of its time, you know, the 60s. This definitely feels like it's of the 70s and makes complete sense that it be so. Uh, the setting in the mall is just spectacular. There's some great comedic moments in this film as well, as well as a lot of commentary on just kind of consumerism and everything else. So, I mean, come on. Uh, this is such a fantastic film. I really hope that it comes back in print in the States. Uh, I haven't checked out the 4K box set. Uh, but I do hear that it's supposed to be really good. All right, so now we're going to change it up because obviously there was the Romero zombies that moved very slow and, um, you know, they were more, it was more about the number of them converging on you at once. Uh, let's go to the different set, which was very fast moving, very scary looking zombies. 28 Days Later. I adore this film so much. It is so scary. There, I've watched this film many times. There's still scenes that I'd still jump at whenever whenever they come up. I, in particular, when they're trying to change the flat tire and they get it done, and the last second they all shut the doors, and then the it's like the brake light hit the brake lights hit, and then you see that person just come up like right on the window. It's it's such a scary film. I think the interesting thing about this one is it was shot on some type of digital video kind of camera, and so if you watch this on Blu-ray. I mean, several reviews I saw at the time, it was like, this movie looks like trash, and it really does. But it was more of the uh, way it was shot with the type of uh, digital video it was used for. So that's why it does that. Um, the last part of the film, the last five minutes, is shot on film, and it looks spectacular. But I thought it was a very interesting choice to do that to basically symbolize that we're in a rough time, so it's shot very roughly. And then once things look like they are looking up at the end, then it kind of clears up. So, but I mean, this, I mean, you know, Danny Boyle just crafted an amazing film. Uh, Cillian Murphy is just spectacular in the role. I mean, whenever he first wakes up in the hospital and is very confused about what happened, uh, he's obviously we would all be in that situation. He does a good job of conveying that confusion. He's clear. He's just completely out of his depth. You know, he got injured and as he kind of basically went to sleep, 
the world was normal, and then you wake up, and everyone's gone. What's going on? And then you find out that everything's happened in 28 days. So um, I love this film. It's so scary to watch. It's so great. All right, another different kind of zombie movie. And um, in our uh, recommendations for kind of must-watch Halloween picks, I picked this one. And I was looking at it, and I was like, I don't know if it's a zombie movie or not, but I'm going to go ahead and count it because it's kind of the same idea, but the crazies. And, of course, I'm picking the, the remake uh, from the George Romero classic because I really, really like this movie, and I really love the way it's done. I think if we ever did a uh, uh, our favorite remakes kind of uh, video, we'd probably this would probably be in it. Uh, the zombies in this are more from a virus that a... Uh, a federal or a, a plane from the federal government was basically flying this virus on the way to get incinerated and destroyed and it crashes in this small town and everybody starts getting infected and this is what you know, it was basically this virus was designed to destabilize the population and it does that and then the so the government comes in and tries to first control it and then later on, it just kind of escalates from there. But I mean, the zombies in this, they are terrifying. They're not mindless. Whereas like in the Romero film, like the um, like the actual zombies in like Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, even 28 Days Later, even though they're completely different than the ones in those other films, um, where they're kind of brain dead and not able to think, these are still not they're still there you know they're still somewhat you know intellectual but they have a propensity for violence and killing and this is very chilling to watch there's several scenes in this that still get me going and like oh my gosh it's amazing so i really love this film i wish they would do a sequel i think i mentioned that in several videos where this where we've talked about this film i really want a sequel to this this would be amazing please 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 make it happen all right, so we've talked about the classics. We've talked about a couple ones that are different from the classics. And now I figured we'd talk about kind of parody, funny versions. So, of course, when you talk about parodies, you start with Shaun of the Dead. Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, just wonderful. Of course, this is part of the Cornetto trilogy with The World's End and Hot Fuzz. And this is just the perfect parody of a zombie film. It is scary in certain parts. Uh, I say scary, but I mean, you know, like the zombies are well done and there's some gory effects and it's just amazing. And uh, I love the way they set it up, you know, that basically half the people are brain dead anyway. <laughs> I love that they set that up to begin with. And then, of course, it's slowly, you know, the zombie apocalypse comes on and and it's up to, you know, Sean, Sean and uh, I forget Nick Frost's character, uh, Ed, yeah, his best pal, Ed, uh, to uh, figure this out. And, uh, of course, I love the whole bit about, you know, going to, uh, you know, going back to the Winchester, wait for all this to blow over. Like, I think I use that quote all the time, especially in 2020. Like, let's just go to the Winchester and wait for all this to blow over. But, oh, my gosh, I adore this film. It's I can watch this even not during Halloween. It's it's so funny. And finally, of course, this is one that we've featured several times on the channel, and especially during the month of October, because it's just one that me and Michelle just love to bits. Zombieland. Again, it, it's a fantastic uh, version of zombies. There are a lot of, I mean, they're, they're very scary, very gory. Uh, whereas Shaun of the Dead, it is gory. Uh, this really turns it up. This is definitely very, very much R-rated and deserves it. And it's scarier than Shaun of the Dead in parts, but it's still very funny. Um, you know, uh, Columbus in this film, played by Jesse Eisenberg, he has this set of rules that he follows. And they're just, they're really funny in, in that they attack kind of the tropes that you see in zombie movies. And then also, I mean, just the the chemistry between all of the all the characters in this film, you know, Abigail Breslin's character, Emma Stone, um, uh, Woody Harrelson, and Jesse Eisenberg, those four, the chemistry is just spectacular. It works so well. And, I mean, it's, and, of course, a great cameo by Bill Murray in this. 
and it's just fantastic. I fully recommend it. You know, we haven't actually watched the sequel yet. We have it on 4K. We were waiting, or we've got the PS5 ordered, and we're, it's coming. So as soon as we do that, we're going to watch that. I've heard great things about that one as well. But the original one, highly recommend it. Uh, you know, if you love zombie movies, you also love a little comedy with it, that's your pick. All right, so those are my picks for my favorite zombie films to watch during Halloween season. I would love to hear your thoughts as well. I also would love to hear some of your recommendations for other zombie movies. Please let me know that in the comments section. As well, if you like what we're doing here at D's Nerds, hey, we're just two nerds on one channel talking about the nerdy things we love. Please subscribe to the channel as well as ring that bell icon so you know when we have new videos coming out. As well, we're also on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, so please follow us there. We're posting content pretty much daily. So until next time, I'm Chris, and we are D's Nerds. You guys have a great, safe rest of the day. Bye, guys.